Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to be talking about the Elite Pharmaceuticals ELTP earnings summary. Today is the 16th of August, 2024. Uh, the report came out on the 14th, and the conference call was the 15th. So in the summary, we're going to be looking at the bullish and bearish parts of the company. So I generally follow small cap pharma. I do indie games. I do a little bit of everything else. So if you like what I'm doing, hey, please like and subscribe. It helps out a lot, and thank you. Uh, disclaimer is I own the stock. I bought it a little under $0.04, cents, so I am still loving this action. Uh, I'm an amateur investor, and any advice given should be followed up by our due diligence, and any information given is valid for today, the 16th of August, and the slideshow will not be updated. But as new news comes out, new slideshows. So let's get right into the report. Uh, it's another solid quarter. They recorded a record $18.8 million in revenue for the quarter, which beats some years of total sales. So that's fairly impressive. The company did trade fairly flat on the news as growth continued up, but net income was only about $0.6 million. Some of that was because of uh, fair value warrants and stuff like that. So more of a paper exercise. They did a little bit better than that 0.6 million. The company had 8.4 million in cash and almost 20 millions in their account receivable. And this really wasn't a home run report. But again, it's another solid base kind of quarter. Like I am perfectly happy with this. I'm happy with the investment. There was really nothing alarming about the report. And like I said, I think they're just going to continue to get more and more revenues. So I think we're going to have pretty much probably a whole year of record revenues. So the company summary. So right now they are 16 approved products. Yes, that's I said that correct. Right now, six are awaiting launch. So they have a lot to move forward with in the next couple of years. Again, I'm looking at that and I'm like with six new products coming in, even if they're small, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, the company does own an oral solid dose facility in New Jersey. Uh, there is minor debt and bond repayments. It's like $2 million over four years. Nothing that we really care about. Um, no shares were sold this quarter, which is always nice, even though the company does have already a billion out there. Uh, so the company has partnered with some drugs, and they sell some under their elite name. And the company is beginning to target larger drugs for its generics. So it used to be a very niche uh, generic company. And now they've kind of, with with Adderall and Adderall X, uh, Extended Release, they have decided, hey, you know what? We can do that, but we need one or two like major hitters here. So why is the company between 18 and 20 cents? Of course, share counts above a billion, which we've said before. Um, and so that makes your market cap normally between 180 million and 200 million, depending on what it is. Uh, the company's only recently profitable. So if you look at last year, they were not profitable. This year they are. Um, the company is currently selling some of its products under its own labels. And a majority of the sales come from the generic versions of Adderall and Adderall XR. One thing that I've, I've stressed a lot, and I've, this slide is pretty fairly stagnant, unfortunately, because nothing has really changed. Uh, management still has work to do with the conference call and given us a clear path to a major stock exchange. I know they keep talking about it. It's in the future, but it'd be nice to get some steps to that. So what could go wrong? So we've done basically a very bullish part of this company. So what could go wrong? And really, it's one big thing. And that's a majority of the sales come from a generic version of Adderall and Adderall XR. If we see a stabilization in that market, it could spell trouble. Currently, and I checked this today as I check pretty much almost every month at this point, uh, there's still more prescription than pills available. So there's still an Adderall shortage, which means the company does not have to be competitive in the space. So obviously, it's really easy to sell if... Any place just needs drugs. I mean, that makes it pretty simple. Uh, the DEA, of course, has raised its quota on how much uh, could be made, to, and they think that will stop the shortages. I, we're getting close. As some, some people are ex uh, expecting the shortages to be done by this year, but that's probably not a huge problem as long as there's not too much uh, extra for that. And that is the largest problem with Elite, with most of its sales tied to this drug. If there is too much Adderall on the market, it could be a problem. Now, again, I don't think it's going to, they're going to, I think, keep it close to the vest. So I think we're still going to be profitable, but we're still going to watch the situation. Okay. Uh, so company still a penny stock. However, we are continuing to see the turnaround story. If we continue to see this kind of growth and stabilization, what's probably going to happen is a reverse split and be able to join a major market. And I'm thinking of one to 10, you go from 1 billion to 100 million. It's not terrible. Uh, that would definitely get us. I mean, at the moment, that would get us to a $2 company, which could go onto the market. So, um, or go onto a major market, not all of them, but some. 
So if the company could hit another Adderall, they have one in the market. So we're going to definitely be kind of looking at that. The sky's the limit and the company is definitely well positioned for it. And like I said, we do have one in the market that is like an 800 million uh, total revenue. So if we can just kind of like break into there, we'll be in good shape. So I hopefully this gave you a lot of information. Hopefully this helped. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And I hope you have a wonderful day.